This video has been highly requested from hundreds of you residents for quite a while now, and for a long time I have been putting it off, truthfully because we didn't know a whole lot about the Spinosaurus or what it looked like. I didn't want to get it wrong or send out misleading information. I love making these kind of videos and I just want to make sure that I get it right for you guys. However, some new research has helped push our understanding of this mysterious creature forward, and with it comes a whole slew of new information that has helped me come to a conclusion on what we currently believe the Spinosaurus may have looked like. So on that note, what did the Spinosaurus really look like? Before we get into it, I just want to make sure you guys hit that notification button, because for some reason YouTube has been forgetting to tell you guys when we upload videos so just tap it to turn it on so you don't miss out. The Spinosaurus was a theropod dinosaur that roamed the region of North Africa around 112 to 95 million years ago during the Turonian states of the Cretaceous period. It was discovered in 1912 by German paleontologist Ernst Stromer during an Egyptian excavation, which is where it gets the name Spinosaurus asiaticus. Now I want to make sure I get this right because last time I got it wrong and you guys made sure to tell me that. The Spinosaurus asiaticus, meaning Moroccan spine lizard. So its name translates to mean Egyptian spine lizard. It's most known for the enormous 2 meter sail that protruded from its back and the instantly recognizable crocodilian like snout. Like the T-Rex, the Spinosaurus reached new levels of fame after being featured as the antagonist to Joe Johnston's Jurassic Park 3, where it was bigger, scarier, and more realistic than ever seen before. Even though reception for the film wasn't great, tons of new fans were introduced to the Spine Lizard, which brought scientific interest to the creature that had previously been grossly misinterpreted by pop culture basically being a T-Rex with a big sail going down its back. Fun fact of the day, the original fossils that were discovered in 1912 were destroyed during World War II when the Allies dropped bombs throughout Nazi Germany, which destroyed the Munich Museum where they were held. This prevented the Spinosaurus from becoming as popular as it could have been at the time, so in an alternate universe where the Munich Museum was not destroyed, the Spinosaurus could possibly be more famous than the T-Rex. Now onto the specific features of the Spinosaurus. First off, its legs. This has been cause for great debate since it's been argued whether its legs were long like a common tyrannosaur walking on two legs, or if they were short like a crocodilian, leading it to walk on four legs. This argument came about when a 2014 study attempted to reconstruct a Spinosaurus specimen using photographs from Strom's findings, combined with existing fossils and those uncovered using infrared sensors. By calculating and resizing the fossils we have on record, they came to the conclusion that its back legs were simply too short to be exclusively relied on for movement. Therefore, its arms seemed like a reasonable solution to this problem, making it quadrupedic. However, Scott Hartman, a skeletal reconstruction artist, looked into the Spinosaurus and its fossil's proportions and noticed something wasn't quite right. He realized that the study's calculations were all wrong, and that the hind limbs were about 27% shorter than they were meant to be due to a misunderstanding in the main text. This combined with the fact the Spinosaurus's wrists weren't built for supporting its own body weight and that they would have snapped if it tried to use them for support confirms that the Spinosaurus was indeed bipedal. Instead, its arms and claws would have been used for fishing and attacking, though this doesn't rule out the possibility of it using its own claws to help bear its weight for short periods of time. It just wouldn't have been its primary form of locomotion. Taking matters into his own hands, Scott drew the new Spinosaurus, which is much more accurate. We now know that its back legs were very much more capable of supporting the Spinosaurus's weight. Even though they're not nearly as long as people originally thought, they sit somewhere in between. While Spinosaurus was once thought to stand 6 meters tall, with a length of approximately 14 meters, the new, new Spinosaurus stands at around 4 to 5 meters tall, with a length of 13 to 18 meters. 6 feet longer than your average double-decker bus. 
and the creature weighed anything from 7 to 21 tons, though the extent of this figure is still being debated by scientists. But how does this new information affect how the Spinosaurus functioned as a semi-aquatic animal? Well, according to new research, the Spinosaurus may have actually not been a good swimmer after all. The analyst used computer simulations to determine how the creature would have floated, and the results suggest that the Spinosaurus would have been too buoyant to dive easily into the water in pursuit of its prey, and because of its top-heavy slender figure, it would have keeled over onto its side, making it almost completely immobile in deep water. However, this doesn't mean it didn't spend a lot of its time by the water. Its snout was specifically designed for fishing, and since its nostrils were located far up the snout close to the eyes, it meant it could leave its mouth in the water for extended periods of time, which is necessary for hunting sessions. The Spino also had very small bumps on the front of its snout. These are called pressure sensors, and they act almost like whiskers seen on cats. Crocodiles have the exact same evolutionary features, which are used so they can detect their next meal lurking in the water. Now, there's one thing which is always a call for debate amongst the community, and that's whether dinosaurs like the T-Rex had feathers. There tends to be massive debate over most theropod creatures that walk the Earth. Yet, however, when it comes to the Spinosaurus, people seem to believe that it did not have feathers and that it was more crocodilian-like. Why is this? Well, obviously, its snout gives the impression to casual observers that it was indeed crocodilian. But if you actually take a look at its skull structure, it really doesn't have a lot in common with crocodilians. The nostrils are located close to the eyes, much like a bird, and its entorbital fenestra, orbit, and inferior temporal fenestra are all located in the same place as any traditional theropod, which are obviously closely related to birds. Not only this, but we now know it is indeed a bipedal theropod that can't even swim very well. So I think it's time to consider that the Spinosaurus may very well have been covered in feathers. The extent to which it was covered in feathers still remains a mystery, however we can continue to speculate based on the animal's environment. And after reaching out to paleo artist Lunard Ying, we were able to both collaborate and piece together what the Spinosaurus may have looked like. As you can see, the Spino features the shorter bipedal legs and the long wavy sail that would have been used for attracting mates and displaying maturity. It also sports a neck that pulls back like a pelican, which helps it swallow and digest larger fish. This impression also features a thin layer of black and white feathers, something that a lot of semi-aquatic birds do indeed have. So, with our current scientific understanding, this is what the Spinosaurus really look like. In conclusion, we know more about the Spinosaurus now more than ever, and that it was indeed mostly bipedal, that it didn't spend most of its time swimming, and that it potentially sported a beautiful thin coat of feathers. This animal would have been the apex predator of its time around the riverbank. The Spinosaurus in my eyes is probably one of the most fascinating creatures on the planet, and only gets more interesting as we learn more about it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like to show your appreciation. And if you learned something new, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more dinosaur goodness. And remember to hit that notification button to stay up to date. I've been your host, Alistair, and we'll see you in the next one.